What's going on YouTube? Welcome to Wessie's Angling. Today I'm going to be going through my top five tips when fishing a method feeder in summer. We're going to be going through things like location, what bait to use and the tactics. The first thing I'm going to talk about is what time to fish in summer and also choosing a peg and a location to fish. So we're doing a morning session today, it's just hit 5.30 a.m. and I'll probably fish till just after dinner. Alternatively, you can fish from like four o'clock till up till evening. Three things that I like to look out for when I'm choosing a peg. So overhanging trees like these here, aerators, or also uh, reed beds and margins like this down here. You want to see what way the wind's blowing as well. If possible, you want to be fishing into the wind like I am. Okay, let's talk about what baits I'm going to be using today. I've got some two mil pellets here that I'm soaking in attractant. That's the first thing I did when I got here. Put some water in, just covered them so that they're going to absorb all that uh, flavor from the uh, attractants that I've put on them. I use a 50-50 mix of those pellets with this ground bait. Again, this is a nice sweet flavored ground bait and we're just going to use half this pack for today's session. It's surprising how long it lasts here. Don't waste bait. You can always seal it back up and use it again. You can use all pellets in summer if you wanted. If you just wanted to use completely two mils, there's nothing wrong with that. But personally, I always like to use a little bit of ground bait. I think it breaks off the feeder on the way to the bottom and helps draw the fish down through the layers of the water uh, towards your feeder. So that's our ground bait in our mixing bucket. We're just gonna grab our two mils and I'm gonna stir these up just to make sure that attractant's nice and mixed through. As you can see, they've uh, absorbed all the water that I've put on them. So these pellets will be nice and soft and ready to mould around your feeder. Obviously for you beginners out there, make sure you use the measuring instructions on the back of the, uh, the ground bait. I'm just going to eyeball it. Little amounts more in this situation. You don't want to uh, over wet the ground bait. That can be a bit of a disaster. It'll just stick and gloop into the feeder and it won't come off um, the feeder nicely. You want it to dissolve in the water. So I'm going to add a little bit more to this because uh, the, the ground bait will absorb some of that water as well over time. But don't forget, you can always add tiny amounts of water as you go and it'll just keep it nice and moist. I'm just going to put a little bit more in like that. And then we'll mix our two mils in with it and uh, put it through the riddle. See, that looks like it's uh, pretty much perfect now. So we're going to put our two mils in. Get them all in there. Mix them through. So there you go. That's your ground bait and pellet mix. I'm going to put it through the riddle just to make sure that there's no big lumps. Um, for the beginners out there, it's, it's not 100% necessary this, you don't have to do this, but uh, it does make it a nicer consistency to go on the, uh, the feeder. Just so you're not getting any big clumps of uh, wet ground bait in there. So, as you can see, all that's going through nicely, even the two mils. There we go. This should all bind together nicely. Let's try it. So there you go. It should squeeze together and hold, but you should be able to break it up nice and easily with your fingers. Oh, that's perfect, that. So we'll put that down and we'll uh, have a quick chat about summer hook baits. Now, I primarily use wafters. Um, I think they're the, you can't beat them in terms of summer fishing. The you know nice bright ones. I've got some chocolate orange. I've got some washed out wafters at various sizes, six mil all the way up to ten mil. Obviously, balance them against the size of the hook that you're using. We sometimes use corn bright baits as long as they're sweet. I think they work great in summer. So this is the setup that I'm using. I'm using my Shimano Speedmaster rods, lovely short ten foot rods, and a pair of Preston Innovation banjo feeders. So I've already preset these up, so we're good to go. 
I like to have them pre uh, pre set up so I can literally just get them out of the bag, um, and uh, we're good to fish. The quiver tip that I'm using on these is a two ounce, and I think the other one is a one and a half ounce. As long enough, as long as it's strong enough to cast the feeder, but it's not like we're fishing miles and miles out. So I've got some gripping uh, rod butt rests there, just so my rods don't get dragged in if I'm messing about with the camera. Before we get our hook links on, what I like to do is uh, clip up to the spot that I'm fishing. Now, I'm going to probably swap between the aerator, which is over to my left, and this uh, overhanging set of trees down there at the bottom. I've always fancied fishing to this. Um, so we're going to clip up to it. So that first cast wasn't quite far enough out. So what I'm, what I'm doing is um, I have just pulled a little bit of line off my reel. Uh, probably a couple of feet because that's how far away uh, I was from the trees and then I've reclipped back up so this time the cast should be absolutely perfect and make sure that when you cast you have your rod tip down just so you know that when you put your rod back on the feeder um, you're going to be in the right place so that just needs a little bit more line taken off there and then we'll re-clip back up again. And that next cast should be absolutely perfect, tight up to them trees. So just a little tip there for you. And that'll allow you to build up a nice swim in that area, uh, fishing accurately. So let's try this now that I've re-clipped it up a little bit further. It's a nice overarm cast there. There you go, that's absolutely perfect. Tight up to them trees. Now that we've got our distance sorted, uh, we can get our hook link on. So I'm just pulling the, uh, the insert out of the method feeder just so I can hook one of these pre-tied hook links on. Now, for the beginners out there, you can buy your own hook links. I like to tie mine because I am very specific on like what kind of hooks that I use when I'm method feeding. I like a nice wide uh, gape feeder hook. I'm just using an eight mil washed out pink wafter on this first cast, but I will swap between them. Like I say, you can use corn as well in summer, anything bright and sweet. Got a nice big loop on there that acts as a bit of a boom, which will uh, push the hook link away from uh, the feeder once it's popped out. So I've got that in, push that back into the insert, and there you go, that hook link's now secured in. So it's about four inches long. It's about the maximum that I would use for a method feeder hook link. Grab my banjo mold if I can find it. There it is. And we're going to squeeze, put a little bit of ground bait and pellets in first. That just hides the um, the wafter on top. You'll see that in a second. I'm going to cover it, give it a nice tight squeeze into the mold. You can just squeeze it around the uh, the method feeder with your hands, guys, like this. You don't have to use the molds. That's just to uh, make you spend more money, I think. But, I mean, they do give you a nice, neat presentation, but I don't think it's ultra necessary for the beginners out there. Tell you what, guys, the one thing I have noticed about this peg that I didn't notice before is there's a lot of surface sludge being pu pushed into this side, which I don't really like. Um, I know the wind's blowing this way, but I thought it had cleared it, and it's not. Anyway, we'll see how we get on. So I'm just going to cast this out to that tree. So, again, perfect cast because we've clipped up. I'm just going to lower that down onto the rest, make sure that you sink your line, I'm just going to pull a tiny bit off and then set it down, just so that the tip's not too tight, you want a nice curve in your tip but not too aggressive, you want to be able to see some indications, so there we go, that's our setup. As you can see, the rod tip's at a nice angle to where I'm fishing to. It's not too aggressive. But what I might do is I might put a rod down this margin as well. 
and show you that you can use the method feeder up close. So this uh, ground bit's dried out a little bit while we're getting set up, so I'm just going to add a touch more water. And then we're going to mix that through. And that should be perfect again. Get all this rubbish out of it. I think I'm going to drop my second method feeder rod into this margin just off these uh, reeds that have fallen into the water that are creating a nice overhang. Uh, it looks fishy to me. I'm sure that there'll be carp moving up and down them. But like I said, I'm, I don't like this sludge that's blowing into the reeds. So it might be putting them off a bit. I don't know whether it's like scum off the top of the water or what. I don't know. I don't like it though. It's really making me want to move peg. Uh, to the other side where it, it looks clear. Uh, my dad's actually fishing with me today. He's fishing uh, the other side of this uh, overhanging tree around the side of the lake. And he's had a good few fish already, uh, a couple of nice tench. So um, if I've not got anything in the uh, first three or four casts, I will probably move around to the other side next to the other aerator because there's two opposing aerators. But for now, I'll just drop that there in that margin. For the beginners out there, if you're not confident in using double method feeders like this, don't do it. Just use one. Um, you don't necessarily get any more fish by using two. I just like to try different areas and uh, locate the fish faster. I don't fish for long sessions. You know, I'll be lucky if I get a few hours session. So I like to uh, maximize the amount of fish that I'm going to catch in that session. So I am going to rebate this one. It's been in a while and the waft has come off, which is strange. They usually hold pretty well. So whether that's been taken by something, but I didn't see any indications on the rod tip. Again, I'm just putting a tiny bit in the mold, pushing the wafter in, covering it up and then squeeze in the method feeder into the mold. So the sun's started to come up now and it's starting to warm up. Uh, I'm still fishing over by this tree. I've not had anything from the tree yet, which is strange. I thought I really would. That was an awful cast, but we'll, uh, we'll roll with it. We'll see if they're a little bit further out from that tree. You just, to be fair, you can cast around till you locate where the fish are and then clip up to that spot if you want to there's nothing wrong with that all you can do is use your knowledge and watercraft to have an idea of where the fish are you know at the times of year that you're fishing so like i said in the summer your margins um your aerators aerators are a massive fish magnet um snags anywhere you think that the fish are going to be but it's not strictly like that you do have to find them. They could be mid-water. Who knows? Even though there might be people out there that tell you that there is, there's no set of rules that you can stick to for fishing. Experiment. You know, that's the exciting thing about fishing, in my opinion. That, you know, just trial and error. Seeing what works best for you. All I want to do with these videos, guys, is just give you a little bit of guidance. You know, figure it out for yourselves. That's, that's part of the fun. You never know what you're going to catch. Uh, or where you're going to catch it so try different places you know don't stick to the same swims all the time i really do hope that you're managing to pick up a couple of tips from this video and that it's helpful and informative i'll be doing my first giveaway on the channel at the end of this video for people that have commented down below and that are subscribed to the channel so make sure that you've done that and you'll be in for a chance of winning uh, the method feeders that i'm going to be giving away Thank you to everybody that's already subscribed to the channel and that's following the videos. It really means a lot to me. And you're still in for a chance of winning those method feeders if you drop a comment. It's not just new subscribers. So uh, make sure that you've commented. If you want to suggest uh, what you want me to do in the next video, you're more than welcome to do that. If you're wondering where I'm fishing today, I'm at High Hayes Fishery in Eccleston. Um, it's a really nice fishery. It's got three different lakes, uh, all with a mixture of stuff in. They've got some really nice hide, uh, tench, barbel, carp, so uh, really nice coarse fisheries and solid facilities as well.
got a few casts over to that tree and I'm just going to try fishing just out from that aerator and then I'll work my way down uh, towards the middle line and I'll do the same from the tree and I'll work my way towards uh, where I'm fishing so we'll try and locate the fish a really tentative bite but we're in so first fish of the day it is about quarter past six so we've been fishing for about three quarters of an hour it's like a little f1 nice first fish let's get it over that other rod and there we go Let's have a look at it for you. I'm not going to lift it uh, onto the unhooking mat. It's not big enough for that. I'm just going to uh, keep it in the net and see if I can hold it out for you. It looks like the hook's come out in the net anyway. Let's have a look. I'm, re I'm just releasing some line off the spool there to give me some uh, line to work with. But yeah, it looks like he's, he's spat the hook in the net, which is awesome. Saves me a job on hooking it. But yeah, nice little F1. You can see it's an F1 because of that lateral line down the middle of the fish. Do you see those dots? Okay, let's get another. Where's my towel? Fish slime. Well, I've been watching my dad play a fish for a while, so I'm just going to move around and see if he uh, needs a lift with it. Must be a decent one. Let's have a look and see what it is. What is it? Is it a carp? Yeah. Somebody's a net it. Yeah. Just have one. I've had a small, yeah, small F1. Look at it. What do you think it is? Nine pound. It's not far off a double, is it? Right inside. Right, let's get these rods back out. I've just come back round to my swim. Uh, I've got a chocolate orange wafter on uh, one rod and I have um, a washed out wafter on the other. They're both 8mm wafters which balance perfectly with these uh, size 12 wide gauge feeder hooks that I'm using. So I'm going to try a little bit closer in this time and one rod over to the aerator as well. It's a touch closer in from that tree. And the other rod I'll put over close to the aerator, which is in the middle over there. I don't know whether you can see it on the GoPro. So I'm just setting the tip so it's got a nice little bend in it. Let's get this second rod out over there, close to the aerator. I'm just going to make sure that the uh, line's not wrapped around my rod tip. So that looks okay. So I just reel in and I let a little bit of line out. Just watching for the method feeder dropping. Usually tells me that the uh, it's not wrapped around. And then I line up to where I'm going to cast and then cast in. So that's just off that aerator, probably about six foot off it. Don't want it too close because obviously if a fish bolts, I don't want it to get snagged around that. And then I'll just line my tip up nicely with the other one, just so I can see any indications. So you can obviously turn the handle 
which will tighten against the method feeder. These method feeders are 45 grams, so you can get a nice um, aggressive bend in that tip, but you'll still see plenty of indications on there. Just using some 6,000 reels. I think these are Daiwa reels. drop that bite so that tells me that there's uh, a bream there usually get drop backs from bream occasionally from barbel as well right let's get this bream netted so i've just pulled it over my other line there and slip it into the net try and net it for all this sludge it's really doing my head in all this sludge i might have to uh move pegs soon it's getting on everything. Let's get it unhooked. Yeah. Ah! Hook my finger. Awesome. Nice little skimmer. Into the sludge. So now we've found out that there's a shoal of bream in that peg. Uh, we know that we're going to cast there again and we could probably catch bream all day long there so i'm just checking my hook make sure everything's okay wafter's all right so we'll just rebait fill up the feeder and then squeeze it in and it gives a nice little package there to work with like i said you don't need to use the molds you can just squeeze it around the feeder nothing wrong with doing that nothing doesn't have to be perfect There's a guy actually setting up opposite me, so I'm just going to cast this one just to the right of the uh, aerator rather than in his peg. I think he's fishing a feeder as well, so no doubt it'll be cast into the other side of that aerator. That's perfect. That's just about where we were before anyway. I'm just going to set that back on my rest. There's a nice little bend in that uh, rod tip already. That looks good. I've not had anything over by that tree. So I'm going to reel in. And I'm going to cast this one a little bit closer. I'll probably come maybe 12 foot off that tree. I mean the uh, hook length wrapped around the method feeder. I don't know whether that's just happened on the retrieve. Or whether it was like that. I'm not sure. I'm just going to check the hook link. Make sure it's right. Looks okay. I'm actually using small method feeders here, but don't be scared about using larger method feeders in uh, in summer. And go even smaller than this one in winter. But, you know, every season, so when it turns into uh, autumn, I'll do another method feeder fishing tips video. And I can tell you how to change your approach slightly, depending on what season you're fishing. I'm sorry about the wind as well guys it's blowing right into me here so I hope it's not too loud on the camera there's things I can do in editing to make that a little bit better but it still doesn't get rid of it completely there we go so we'll load it up I'm gonna squeeze it on a bit tighter get a little bit dry that ground bait I might have to uh, wet it down a touch it is warm today it's going to mid 20s so hopefully we get a few fish before it gets too warm and the fish start coming up in the water. That's perfect, about 12 foot off that tree. And I'm just going to set that tip down in line with the other. We're into another fish on the aerator rod. It feels like another bream, so I think I was right that we are into a, uh, a school of bream. Feels like a little bit of a better one. Just trying to get it around this other line. This is where these 10 foot feeder rods really come in handy. Because this is a really tight swim. I've got a tree to my left there. And I'm trying to get this bream across the other lines. And they're really easy to control the fish. Really soft rods as well. So 
it takes all the lunges from the fish close up. I'm just going to let some line out so I can net it though. And just swing it round here next to my other rod. Here we go. Into the sludge. Yeah, it's a little bit of a better bream, that one. I'll see if I can lift it out and show it here. I think we'll uh, I think we'll actually get the mat sorted for this one. Where have I put my landing mat? Uh, I've clipped it up on my rod bag over here. So it doesn't blow away. <laughs> Right, let's show it you. It is a nice bream, this, actually. There are some decent bream in here, to be fair. I've caught them bigger than this in here, but... Still catch these all day long, no problem. I'm a feisty one, this one. There we go. A nice little bream. Let's get it back. Okay guys, I've actually decided to move peg. I'm traveling light, so it's nice and easy to do that. My dad's fishing, like I said, at the opposite side of this tree. So I'm gonna move around to the opposite side of him. Uh, there's another aerator on the other side, which I'm gonna try and fish to. So all my stuff's moved around and we're still set up. That's one of the brilliant things about traveling light like this. Uh, only bring in what you need fishing. I know a lot of the match guys won't like this tip. I'm sure that they'll think that you should stay in whatever peg that you've chosen. Um, but for you uh, pleasure fishermen out there, really don't be afraid of moving peg if you need to. I don't like all that sludge blowing into me. So I'm going to have one rod down this margin where these reeds are. So it looks really good down there. Um, don't get stuck in a tree like I just did. It's really overhanging that. It doesn't look like it on the camera, but it comes right out. So I'll just set that down. My second rod, I am going to put over near the aerator. So the aerator's turned off now, but hopefully there'll still be fish holding to that area. Um, there's bubbles coming up all over on this side. There wasn't on the other. You probably can't see them on the GoPro. But there's loads coming up around the aerator. And down that right-hand side. So we'll load it up. Let's get a nice little overarm cast to this aerator. Try not to cast over the uh, the pipe. So I'm just aiming where I'm going, swinging back in a nice little overhang lob. That's perfect. Just taking in the slack line, make sure I sink it. And then sit my rod butt down and then gently turn the handle until I've got a nice little bend in that tip. And that's perfect. Ah, wasp. Right, so we've got, we've got both our rods set up there. God, it likes me, this wasp. I must smell like fish slime or something. Okay, so we've got both our rods out there. I'm just gonna grab a brew now. <laughs> pulled it off the rest <laughs> that's the one over to the aerator well this feels like a much better fish it's been on about uh, two or three minutes so far and it's just cruising up and down by that aerator I'm managing to get some uh, some ground on it I might be fishing a soft rod, but I'm not fishing light. I'm fishing 10 pound line. So I'm not scared of uh, giving it a little bit of stick if I need to. Uh, I think my hook link's at eight pounds. So got a nice strong setup for summer method feeder fishing. I wouldn't be using anything less than that in summer. I mean, you can if you want, but the chance of you losing some of the better fish is high. Always make sure that your clutch is set right on your reel as well. That wasp's still trying for me. Must be all this sweet ground bait. 
So I've got it around my other line now. And I'm just trying to negotiate it in between the tree and my other rod. But it's pulling, it's pulling left and right here. It's hugging close to the bottom. It could be a barbel, but I think it's more than likely a carp at this point. Yeah, it's a carp. Like a nice one, definitely over five pound. Stirring up all the bottom there. You can see all the silt coming up through the water. It is quite silty here at High Haze, actually. I think that's why Method Feeder and Wafter work so well. I think the wafters just come up over the silt, which is obviously a massive advantage. If you if you you've got a sinking bait on, it's going to be buried right into that silt, so the fish aren't going to find it as easily. So a nice bright coloured wafter is perfect for these conditions. I think it's starting to tire now. Pulling it up through the water a little bit easier. Oh no, it's powering that tree now. Look at the bend in these rods. They've got a really nice action. They literally bend right down to the rod butt. So the Shimano Speedmasters. Definitely my favourite rod. Obviously not affiliated in any way. Just telling you what I use. Might put a link in the description for some of the, uh, the things that I'm using today. So you can have a look yourself. Right, let's get it netted if it's ready. Oh, it's lunging for that tree. As soon as I get a chance, I'm just going to go for the netting. Oh. for coming in this one. There we go. I think it's swum, <laughs> just swum right into the net. Let's get some line off so we can deal with this. I think I'll get it over to the unhooking mat and have a look at it for you. Okay, so it's a nice mirror. With some really nice scales on it. And get him unhooked. Just in the corner of the mouth there, perfectly. Let's hold him up for you so you can have a good look. It's nice and padded this unhooking mat. Make sure you've got an unhooking mat, guys. Definitely better for the fish. And don't keep them out of the water too long in this kind of weather. It's not good for the slime coat on the fish. So we'll get it back and let's get another one. Get it back over to that aerator. But yeah, definitely over five pound this one. Well, we're in again, ladies and gents. And this one is steaming off to the other side of the lake. Definitely another carp. Exact same spot over by the aerator. I'm just trying to put some, uh, some side strain on it. Getting nice and low to the water. Just trying to turn the fish. Can bully it a little bit like i said i'm not using weak tackle so there we go so it's turned now and it's coming towards us like i said it helps that these rods are nice and soft because they'll just take all the lunges well i just had to turn the gopro off there to save a little bit of battery it's close to being ready for netting i think it is still going on these little steaming runs though. It's powering away there on the surface. But I'm just keeping the steady pressure on it. I'm just going along with where the fish wants to pull. Turn my drag up a little bit. Um, let's see if we can get it in. 
again they, they, they know where that tree is they definitely try and power for that quite a tough little swim this i think we'll get it in here though yeah it's coming there we go in the net well, it only just fits in this one it's a decent sized net that as well it's a really nice looking fish i think it's got like a little bit of ghost carp in it very very light just going to turn the drag down on this other reel in case we're going to take on that rod and we'll go and have a look at it but really nice fish this one it's like a bluey silver color it's either a really light common or a ghosty What a nice fish this one is. Really unique. It must be, like I say, it must be a little bit of ghosty in it. It's not got the typical markings though. Um, it's not that orange and it doesn't really have the skull pattern on the head. Um, but let's get it weighed. Uh, I'm interested to see what it weighs. And try and keep it on the mat as well. Still got plenty of uh, energy left. so tip number five we've had a couple of fish over by that aerator now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to keep casting out to that spot and we're going to build up that better bait on the bottom and what fish will do is they'll hone in on it also don't be scared of recasting often if you're not at a fish in 15 minutes cast back out because sometimes the sound of the method feed are hitting the water can draw the fish in so it's been about 15 20 minutes so i'm going to reel in load the method feeder back up and cast back out this would be a good opportunity as well to uh, swap baits if you wanted to swap baits but i'm going to stick with the pink wafter because that's what i've been getting them on today it's definitely my favorite so the sonya baits pink wafters the washed out ones that is definitely what i catch the most fish on and i use them at lots and lots of different places i've had every species on them pretty much apart from catfish perfect cast i'm not clipped up to this uh, aerator either i'm just doing a, a, a nice overarm cast As long as it's near enough it won't matter too much the smallest crucian i've ever seen in my life but it's a crucian they're nice fish aren't they like a little discus okay so again uh, I've not had anything, it's been about 15-20 minutes, so I'm going to reel in. Uh, I might swap the uh, wafter this time, we'll go with the chocolate orange. See if that can tempt them uh, into taking the bait. So I'll get my little pot of wafters. Just going to adjust this slightly. I might even fish uh, a method feeder to the left. That can be a really good way of fishing double method feeders. I have one going left, one going right. But you need to make sure that your feeder arms adjusted in the right spot so i'll bring this one in now not had absolutely anything down that right hand side um i thought i would get a few fish close in but i haven't done so let's get this bit of weed off and we'll put a chalky orange wafter on Now, you can get tools to make it easier to put these wafters in the uh, the bait band, but I've put so many wafters in that um, I can just do it by hand now. I just pinch the side of the bait band and pull it round to the middle of the wafter and it just pops it over. So that's loaded up. I'm gonna put this one back over to the aerator the chocolate orange on 
Put a little bit of attractant on it this time. Don't need much of that stuff. Now look where I want to cast. Make sure that I'm not snagged up around my tip because that will cut your line. Let a tiny bit of line out and then just swing back. Look where I want to cast to. And then a little flick. And there we go. Sink my line again. Pop it on the rest. Make sure I've got a tiny little bit of a bend in the tip. Right, let's do the other one. So I think I'm going to fish to the other side of that tree near the reeds. It's a little bit snaggy, but I'm sure we'll be able to swing it out there. So we've got an 8mm washed out pink wafter on. Pretty sure I'll pick up a couple of fish um, to the left. Might take a couple of casts, but we'll, uh, I'm sure we'll get a fish around there near those reeds. Again, a little bit of attractant. We'll just draw the fish down through the layers of the water there. Just gonna little underarm flick there to the other side of that tree. And then I'll have the tips pointed in opposite directions. Fishing the double method feeders. Just little adjustments make all the difference with this. Just making sure that everything's even. Nice and easy to see both indications on both sides, watching the tips like this. The rods don't interfere with each other, as you can see. I've got a nice short uh, rear butt rest arm, which if you have too long of a butt rest arm, uh, the tips, if you're fishing like this, are too close together, which you don't want. I was just messing about with the camera again, trying to get some shots for you. And um, we've got another bream, but this one's uh, near the tree. This one's from the left hand rod. It's not as big a bream as the, uh, the one from the other peg. But I'll still show it here. Just make sure that I'm not knocking my camera over. Get him unhooked in the net. Flopping about everywhere now. There we go. Stuck on the net now. Okay, here we go, another nice bream, oh, let's get it back, I'm in again on the aerator rod, feels a little bit different this one, I'm thinking it might be a tench, it's definitely pulling, and it's shot off tip went right round yeah it's a tench nice colours on this one as well really light yellow like a gold bronze differ quite dramatically in colour tench you know they can be anywhere from like a, a pale green all the way to a dark yellowy gold like this one Definitely one of my favourite fish, Tench. Very nice to catch. Always put up a good fight as well. Lovely colours, this one. Just trying to get all this uh, Tench slime off the hook link. <laughs> Not that I think it matters, but... That's the only problem with catching Tench, they are slimy. We'll get that filled back up and out towards the aerator. It's been really productive uh, fishing towards that aerator. The temperature's picking up now. So uh, the fishing has slowed down a little bit, which you'd expect coming up towards midday. But we'll have a few more casts and see if I can get a couple more fish for you before we pack up. I did promise you a giveaway. 
uh, this week. So I am going to put uh, the product that I'm giving away up in the top left hand corner. Don't forget, you have to have commented and you have to be subscribed to the channel uh, for a chance of winning that. So I'll put it in the top left hand corner now. There you go, two Guru X Safe method feeders in 45 grams. Um, really safe for beginners, these method feeders, because if you get a line breakage, the elastic just pulls straight out. So I'll probably pick a winner for that giveaway in a couple of weeks. Feels like we've got another bream on here. And don't forget that you need to have obviously commented and subscribed, so I know who you are. And I'll get them sent out to you. We're getting slightly bigger, these bream, anyway. Tiny, tiny bit bigger, I think. I've had about five or six this size on the bounce now. When they move into your peg, they really do move in. <laughs> they probably move around the fishery in shoals. Well, I will probably end the video on this uh, last fish. It's slightly bigger and I don't want to bore you with all the bream catches. And I'll probably pack up in about 10, 15 minutes anyway. So I hope you've enjoyed this short morning session. I hope you've picked up some tips for summer method feeder fishing. Uh, don't forget, head out early morning or late afternoon for your best chance of uh, bagging a few fish. Thanks again for watching everybody. I'll try and get a video out to you in the next couple of weeks. I know we're uh, due a bit of a heat wave, so I don't know what the fishing is going to be like. But um, if I can get out for an afternoon session, I definitely will. And I'll keep the videos coming. If anybody's got any suggestions, like I said, feel free to comment down below. Oh God, he's only got one eye, this one. Look at him. Freaky. Wow. Right old pirate of a fish. Let's get him back. He's been through enough, this guy.